Right, so we'll start a new project. New project tab. So you can have tab projects in Reef as well, which is quite handy. So what we're trying to re uh, recreate at this point is that. So we're going to have, if we look at one audio track, we've got one audio track which is being panned, which is being sent to a dry bus, which is also being sent to a, a four-channel bus, which is also being sent to a four-channel wet bus, if you like a reverb bus, which is both being sent to a total summing bus that's going to contain everything. So you can have multiple reverb buses and multiple dry buses if you need them. You probably don't. But if you want to group some stuff together to play around with the volumes. And then we'll send it to a decoder, which we'll send to the 24 speakers. So we're going to go through that backwards. So I'll start. I'll set up the decoder first, then a total bus, then a dry and a wet bus, and then stick a source in and then pan it. And then once you've done one track, you can just duplicate the tracks and actually it keeps all the routing and everything else. So it's pretty straightforward, actually. It's a bit complicated for the first bit, um, but that's why I record it on video <laughs> and give you a template. So let's bring uh, this up again. So the first thing is we want our decoder track. Now, any track in Reaper can be routed to anything else. And any subset or group of channels from any track can be routed to anything else. And any track can be sent to any sound card in any configuration. So there's 24, there's, there's a 64 channel sound card on that PC. 24 of those channels are in use. Now the first eight channels are the 5.1 system. So these PMCs. So front left, front right, center, which is out the way of this at the moment. Back left, back right, couple of subs. Uh, so that's the first eight channels. So we're not using those. The reason they're the fir first eight channels is that if you double click a DVD, then it will automatically come out the 5.1 uh, without having to do anything. Now, from that point onwards, from channels 9 upwards, it's the 24 Ds. KRK Rocket 5. So, starts with the middle ring of 8, then goes to the top ring of 8, starting there going anti-clockwise, then goes to the bottom ring of 8, starting there going anti-clockwise. This thing here is the mixer for the sound card. That's not to do anything to do with Reaper. You get that up, if you need to, by double-clicking the little mixer icon down here. You don't ever, or you shouldn't ever, need to change anything on here, but it can be useful to bring it up, because you can see lights bouncing <coughs> up and down if there's audio supposed to be coming out of speakers. I'll tell you how to turn all the speakers on in a minute. Well, I'll tell you now. It's that red button there with the light on behind it. See that button there? That turns on these monitors and all these speakers. Uh, so that's reasonably straightforward. This is going out of focus because Duncan moved it. There we go. Right. So we need to send my decoder, which happens to be connected in exactly the same order as these speakers, obviously. So we want my 24 channel decoder to be sent to those 24 speakers starting at channel 9. That's the important bit. This is channel 9 onwards, so 9 to 32. So, put up a new track. Call it anything you like. I might call it Ambersonic Decoder, for obvious reasons. The next button we're interested in is I.O., Input Output. This is what it sends, what it receives, and what hardware outputs it goes to, and also some MIDI stuff if we're interested. Now, in Reaper, we can do hierarchical parent-child routing, which does simplify some things to do with routing, and there is a little video showing you how to do that on my website. I won't go into that now. It makes it a bit quicker to set up initially, but slightly less flexible in terms of you doing some routing. And actually, I could set it up doing hierarchical parent-child routing, and because you don't have to do anything, you wouldn't actually know how it's routed particularly. So I'm showing you the manual way first, and once you understand this way, going to the hierarchical form if you want to look is very straightforward. But that's what this master parent send button is all about, and we're going to turn it off. It just sends it to the master output, and we're not going to use that for this point, because I want to see this as an actual track. So, how many channels do we want for this track? Well, we want 24, because that's how many speakers we've got. We want those to go to the actual hardware, so click hardware outputs, and choose the starting channel you want to use. So in our case, it's 9, so 9 and 10 will be fine. STR stands for stream. The way that the sound card works is you've got physical inputs, physical outputs, and then software streams of audio. They don't necessarily match the hardware inputs and outputs, however, on that mixer they do. 
so don't worry about it. <laughs> so choose 9 and 10. Then we can say, click on this little drop down box and say, it's not mono, it's not stereo, it's multi channel, it's 24 channels. So send one, channels 1 to 24 to outputs 9 to 32, and that's automatically done. So that's just routed 24 channels of output to our sound card. In the old version, we had to do that in stereo pairs, which was a bit of a pain for 24 channels. Um, but in version 4, which we're on now, um, you can finally do it in one massive block. So that's that. So that's sent the output of that channel that's doing nothing at the moment to the 24 outputs of our sound card, which is being routed to all these speakers. So now we just need a plug-in. Now all my plugins start with the word WIG. Because it turns out that no other plugins start with the word WIG, and it's a good way to find them. In Reaper, you can filter what all the plugins are, because there's loads of them. So I just type WIG in there, and what will come out are all my plugins. Um, you can download these from a website. You can't download all of these from a website, um, but a subset and the ones you'll need. So we're using what's called first order ambisonics. So in terms of the panner, you'll want WIGWare AmbiPan XY 13D. So it's the one that's the important bit, really or you want the polar version. Uh, I use the XY puck to drag around because that's the one everyone prefers. Uh, and it will say one in, four channels out. That's what that bit at the end means. I don't want that one. I want the decoder, anyway. <laughs> Sorry. So you want the 24 speaker decoder. There are two, because I wrote a new one over the summer. Uh, one of them is called Mark II and one of them is called 24 speaker decoder. You, you want to use the one called Mark II because it's newer, it's better. Sounds better. I did. I actually measured where the speakers were, which I hadn't done before. I just guessed. I guessed quite wrongly, so it turns out. Uh, so use Mark II, and then leave it on its default settings. It defaults to being a first order 24 speaker decoder that takes in, as it happens, nine channels, but we're only sending the first four, and kicks out 24 channels, which it automatically routes for you in some sensible order. Luckily, otherwise we'd have to do that manually. And you can see there that the actual decoder is telling you which, you know, whether you're middle, top, bottom, and kind of what order. So that's front left, front left, back left, back left, back right, back right, front right, you know, just to give you some idea of where they're going. But the default routing will all work fine because the speakers are wired up the same way as my decoder. So that's our decoder. So looking back at our little diagram, we now need a, a four channel bus, which will do some summing. So with no plug-in on there, just a four-channel bus. So stick in a new track, we can double-click, make it four channels, take off master parent send, sorry for a start, make it four channels. That's our total bus. And then again, looking back at our little diagram, we want a dry bus and a panner and an audio source. And then I'll add the reverb bus in a minute, just so we get to hear something. So we'll do that. So we'll make a four-channel drive us and then I'll do an audio track with a panel on it. So, oh no, I'll do the reverb bus at the same time. Yeah. So this is our drive bus. Oh, first of all, our total bus needs to send its four channels here. So go to IO, we've made it four channels, send to our Amazonic decoder, and then it will say, what do you want to send? We want to send a multi-channel source, all four channels. And then a slight bug in this version, which I'm still yet to report actually, is that that should now update to channels one to four, but it doesn't. But if I closed it and reopened it, then it has. So that's now sending channels one to four of this track to channels one to four of our 24 channel track, which is what we want. In terms of this dry bus, that also wants to be not master parent sent and it wants to be four channels, and send, I want to send that to the total bus. Notice that I has gone red, that's gone red because we're not sending it anywhere, that's just a warning saying this is something that's going nowhere at all. So if we send that to the total bus, again, all four channels, that won't update but it has really. I'll reopen it just in case you don't believe me. There we go, so that's updated. So that's sending four channels of this to four channels of that. If you want to check, if you look at the receiving track, you can also see from the point of view of that track. So that's now saying I'm sending four channels to the decoder and I'm receiving four channels from dry bus track. So you can look from the sender or the receiver. Uh, and now I want 
an audio track, which again, I'll call it audio track one. It's going to be four channels. So turn off master parent send, make it four channels, and we're going to send that to our dry bus currently. Again, make it all four channels, and that's that. So now we need to put some audio on, we need to add a panner. And then once we've done that and added some reverb, I can then duplicate that track loads of times, and that will just do all the routing and stuff for us, luckily. So let's put a panner on it first. So that's in effects. Starts with wig, and I'll use XY panner with the one in, because that's first order. So one in, four channels out. And then we can just drag that around and move it to wherever we want. And that's pretty much all we need to do. This NFC button, just ignore it. It's near field compensation. It's to do with distance. And if you leave it off there and leave it off on the decoder, then everything will work as you expect, which is basically its default value. Uh, we'll look into that next year if you do mic channel sound. So we can move that around uh, to our heart's content. If you move something into the middle, what it basically does is turns off the directional components of the audio so everything will come out of all speakers equally. That doesn't make it sound like it's coming from the middle of the room. Generally, that makes it sound like it's coming from the nearest speaker to which you're sitting because of precedence effect. The, whatever source hits you first, that's the direction your brain will assume, assume it's coming from because everything coming out of these speakers are the same. That's a bit like a reverb sort of thing. So it won't sound reverberant either, but it'll all sound like it's coming from the nearest speaker. But um, <coughs> People asked me if there was a way of doing that, so I made it so you could. So if you move it in, it will turn off the directionality of the audio. <coughs> until in the middle, it'll be coming from everywhere equally. I'll show you that in a minute. So now we can drag some audio in. There's a little media explorer inside Reaper, but you can just drag things from Explorer or Finder if you're on a Mac. Uh, so I'll just choose a WAV file and drag it in. Now, let me choose one that's actually got some audio at the beginning. Like that one. This is a two channel WAV file. My plugin's only taking one channel. If you leave a two channel WAV file in there, it'll just ignore channel two. If you've got a stereo WAV file and you want to do some stuff with the left channel and some stuff with the right channel, or in this case, I've got a two channel WAV file and I do want to ignore one of the channels, you can explicitly tell Reaper to do that uh, by going to item settings. And then here, there's track channel mode, where you can go mono, down mix, which will sum the two channels together. Look at, just use the left channel, just use the right channel, or do something else that's funky in multi-channel. So I just want the left channel, as it happens, in this one. But if you have got stereo things, and you want to do something to the left and the right channel, then you need to put it in your, you need to use two tracks for it, and then make one track just use the left of your stereo file, and one track just use the right of your stereo file, and then you can pan those two separately and do some funky delay effects or something if you want to. So if I bring up my plugin now and hit play, this might be quite loud actually. Uh, yeah, so that should be the frontish. Coming out the back somewhere. Children of the nations. That should be kind of that side. He's so it will change a bit depending on where you're sitting, but you should roughly get in the general direction where it is. If I move it to the middle, everyone point where they hear it coming from. Where do you hear that coming from? I oh, hear there. <laughs> so pretty much everyone will hear it from the nearest speaker. That's what moving it to the middle will do. It is actually coming out of everywhere equally, which you can see on this thing here. It's pretty much the same. I've not got it exactly in the middle. But you'll pretty much hear it from your nearest speaker because there's no level difference between any of these. So this, that's that. So we could now add some reverb. So I was going to put a reverb bus on here. So let's insert a track. So it's Control and T as it happens to insert a track. Uh, let me close that for now. And I'll add a bit of reverb. So this will be a reverb bus. <coughs> Again, it's going to be four channels. Turn off master parent send, make it four channels. Now this is going to send to the total bus. If we look back at our little diagram, we've got our total bus here. 
So our wet kind of reverb bus is going to send there, so it sums together, and then that'll send to the decoder. So I'll send, oh, I've lost it. Where's my reverb bus? There it is. So I'll send that to my total bus. Again, make sure I send all four channels. That'll update that, even though it looks like it won't. I then want to put my reverb effect on it, which is called Ambi Freeverb, because it's based on a, um, a free open source reverb called Freeverb that was stereo, and I just made it four channel. Simple as that, really. Um, so it's a 3D reverb, because we only need four channels to do 3D in Amazonics. There's two of them, one there. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, they should be the same thing. I don't, there must be two directors we're looking at or something that's got the same plugin in twice. And on there, you've got room size. Damping is how much the high frequencies get rolled off as the reverb goes on. You want that more than 50% or higher. If you keep the high frequencies in, it sounds very unnatural. Uh, I'll show you in a minute. Spread is how surroundy it is. Generally, you'll want that 100%. Put it down to 0%, that turns into mono, which doesn't sound very good, uh, but it's there anyway. Room size pretty much does what it says. If you make the number bigger, it sounds like it's a bigger room. And then freeze mode, or normal mode, I'll show you what that does in a minute. It freezes the delay lines inside it, which is a slightly odd thing, um, but it's very easy to do, so it's there. Um, so, I'm not sending anything to this yet, so I need to get my audio track. At the moment, we're just sending our four channels to the dry bus. We want to also send them to the reverb bus. Oops, missed. Try again. So send multi channel, four channels to the reverb bus. And now we could control how much of our, uh, how much of that particular channel went to the reverb bus with that little send thing there. So if we want some channels to go and some channels to be not quite so much reverb, we could change it per channel by looking in the I.O. section. So if I now send this audio, there should be some reverb on it. Children of the nation. That's quite a lot of reverb, turns out. Um, I might turn that down a bit. That was pretty hardcore. Uh, that's pretty large room. Put the damping up. So, uh, Children of the nation. so this is damping down to zero. So it's gone really bright. So that's just doing all the reflections without low pass filtering them. Sounds really unnatural. Sounds almost noise like. So generally you want to damp it. Now the, so now we've got we've got individual control of the dry signal and the wet signal. So in the in terms of the dry and wet buses, we can So that's the reverb bus. So that's turn off the dry bus. This plugin defaults to passing no dry level through it at all. So I'll show you what the freeze mode does. So you hear that's just fr frozen the reverb and all the delay lines of where it was. And it just keeps looping through that forever until you put the mode back to normal. Which you can kind of use as a funky drone thing if you really want to. Uh, but that's what the reverb does. Other than that, it's pretty standard reverb. Uh, so once you've set up one track, then you can just duplicate that in Reaper and all the routing will be preserved. So if I duplicate, and all the effects and stuff. So if I duplicate that track, if I can find it, there it is, and take off the actual WAV file, then all the I.O. is the same. So it's still sending to the dry bus, it's still sending to the reverb bus, uh, and it's also got the plugin on it. And then once you've got two of them, you could highlight both of them and tell it to duplicate again, and it will duplicate both of those. So you can so you can soon make up a multi you know multi channel. So I duplicate those. So now I've got four tracks that I can stuff audio onto. So I could drag some more WAV files. So get me comedy soprano. Oh, make sure I put it at the beginning of the WAV file of the piece. I make sure I only use the left channel because the right channel has got some funny reverb on it. This was recorded in an old studio in Green Lane, by the way. It's a guy from, I think it's a guy from, it's a guy from Zimbabwe who came to, uh, with a load of QTs on how to kind of sing this style of music, but he also ended up doing one version of the track himself for every single track. So uh, we kept all of him because he was the better one. So we've got soprano, need a bit of tenor. Again, make it mono, item settings, left. Uh, tenor soprano, 
I'll tell you. Uh, left. Need a few more tracks. Duplicate those. I don't know which one's it's do double there. That's double that one. That's double that one. So, uh, alto, baritone. And bass. So now I could kind of pan those round a bit randomly. If you want to keep the panners on screen, you can double click in there and that'll kind of stay on a little window of its own. So you can keep them all on screen if you want. If you want to see what's going on. So I just did that one, do that one. So I'll move it into the video so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to pan some stuff pretty randomly around. So put something back there. Put something back there. You can see it's a very exact science, this panning. Uh, I think I've got some at the front, so I'll have some at the back. Um, and now I could just play that. And that will be one guy singing lots of times around you somewhere. Children of the nation, they need so they can turn down the reverb. Is love, joy, harmony. Children of the nations, they need motherly love. Peace, love, joy, harmony. So things to watch out for on here. So we can see the 24 tracks here. But you can see everything else is four tracks. Four channels per track, I should say. And you can see that in the VU meters. Be careful of clipping. Although internally Reaper won't clip, if you exported a track that has clipped and you export it to a fixed point number format file, like a WAV file or an AIFF file, then it will clip. So. Although you won't hear that clipping, because internally it's floating point, and as long as we don't clip on our outputs, you won't hear clipping. If you're going to archive your file not at the outputs, which you're going to do for this assignment, you're going to save the total bus, you need to make sure that doesn't clip. Otherwise, that WAV file will clip. I could have probably made that sound simpler. <laughs> So that's that, basically. Any questions? So other than that, you can think about, you know, I know you've got to do certain types of effects in your piece. Make sure you get the stereo bit of the piece done first. And then when you can just export your stems and experiment with it in this room, set it up at home or on a PC that isn't in this room. It's easier, frankly. Um, so get everything in, get the plugins set up, you can just download them. Um, when you save your project, once you've done it, save project as, there's a little tick box which says copy all media into project directory and also another one called create subdirectory for project. If you tick both of those, it makes a new directory for your project, puts your project file in it and copies any audio, not move, just copies any audio that you've, you've used into that same project, into that same folder. It makes it really easy to get that one folder and bring it in or put it on Dropbox or whatever it is you want to do. Um, you know, you don't get the usual load of a project, oh, there's a WAV file on some bit of my computer that I've forgotten about. It automatically copies everything you've used into the same folder, which is a really handy feature. Uh, you can even actually convert it into lossy compressed as well if it's massive and you need to bring it in. But um, I'd recommend not doing that unless you really have to. Um, but you can just make it all into Og Vorbis files, which makes it tiny to drag around. Um, and just have a play around with it. I'm purposefully not giving you any rules to follow other than the routing, because I want to see what you end up doing with it. Um, we've had some really good pieces of music that, I've, that I use in demos 
at international conferences. So some of the stuff you heard as you were coming in, and the piece I'll play for you in a minute, this is stuff I've demoed at things like the Digital Audio FX International Conference, things like the Audio Engineers Society 25th UK Conference, um, and they've actually gone down really well um, as, as pieces in their own right using Ambisonic. So, um, you know, the stuff coming out of this module in terms of the student attainment and the quality of the work is actually really high, or can be really high. Um, and it's a very interesting assignment. So if there's no any other questions, I'll, uh, as I'll play some more examples of previous work. <laughs> 